All right, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and get started now. So welcome to green wardrobe. This class will go over environmental benefits of curating a green wardrobe from extending the life of your current garments to changing your shopping habits. This class will provide you with the solutions to closing the loop on textile waste and making the most of your sustainable closet. All right, before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that this land is part of the ancient homeland and traditional territories of 11 tribal nations. So I'll give you a moment to look over this. And then one more thing, just some housekeeping rules. Please make sure to use the chat box for any questions or comments. Um, we'll be stopping peri periodically to address those. And then I'll give you a few moments to look over this as well. All righty. And so here is our agenda for today. We will be going over um, an introduction the problem with textile waste, some solutions to combat that waste, and then we'll wrap it up by answering any questions. Alrighty, and so let's start the morning off with a poll. Let me go ahead and open that up for you. So just have you thrown away any clothing or textiles in the last year? And then just, yes, items were in good condition. Yes, they were only unusable items or no, I didn't throw any items away. So we'll take a little few seconds here to answer that. And I can, I'll share the um, results of the poll. Alrighty, and then Give it a few more seconds. Alrighty, so just a quick introduction on who we are if you're new joining us. We are the Riverside County Department of Waste Resources. So who are we and why do we care about textile waste? Well, the Department of Waste Resources owns and operates the landfill. So what better way to start this presentation than by presenting on a graph of the waste stream? You can see the big categories are organics, paper and plastic. A lot of this material has potential to be diverted and we work on educating our residents and businesses on how to execute that. And then so for this presentation, we will actually be focusing on this other materials chunk of the pie. Of that other's material, 5.8% of that is textile waste. And I know that might not seem like a lot of waste, um, but that works out to be about 17 million tons of textile waste. Um, this is troubling because we continue to increase the number of textiles we send to the landfill each year. For reference, the EPA states that in the year 2000, that number was 9 million tons, meaning that in less than 20 years, we have doubled our textile waste. Really? So what exactly is the problem with textile waste? Well, textile waste has been increasing in our landfills since the 1960s. This can be attributed to a shift in the way we bought clothing. Prior to the industrialization and the birth of big department stores, people had to go get their clothing custom made. So excess clothing wasn't really an issue. For example, textile waste totaled more than 1.7 million tons in the 1960s, and now it's at 17 million tons and growing. And you can't mention textile waste without mentioning fast fashion, so let's dive a little deeper into that. So what exactly is fast fashion and why is it a problem? Well, this picture is a pretty good visual representation of that. I'm sure we can all think of several stores off the top of our head that look like this at our local mall, but let's take a deeper look. So here is the Oxford Dictionary's definition of fast fashion. It's inexpensive clothing produced rapidly by mass market retailers in response to the latest trends. But it's a lot more complex than this. 
The term fast fashion was actually coined by the New York Times in the 90s to describe Zara's mission to only take 15 days for a garment to go from the design stage to being sold in stores. And that has kind of become the standard for most major fas fast fashion brands today. And so why is fast fashion a problem? Fast fashion has issues in every stage of the supply chain. And while I know that this presentation is focused on textile waste, I want to briefly go over some of the larger umbrella issues to really understand how we got where we are today. So here are some of the impacts of fast fashion, including social justice, environmental, for my numbers people, economic issues. On the social justice side, we have the exploitation of garment workers. On the environmental side of, we have textile waste, but I'll dive a little deeper into everything else that's happening behind the scenes before your clothing even makes it into the stores. And finally, we have the economic issues, including the outsourcing of manufacturing jobs and really the slow death of the textile industry in this country. So for social justice impacts, there are a huge, there is a huge social justice issue associated with the fashion industry. It's well known that garment workers are exploited and of the 74 million textile workers, 80% of them are women of color. It's not uncommon uncommon for them to work 14 to 18 hour days. And for example, in Bangladesh, the garment industry minimum wage is roughly $96 a month. Um, unions are not recognized and they have little to no labor laws. On top of that, they're also dealing with unsafe working conditions. The picture you see here on the screen is from the 2013 Rana Plaza disaster. In short, the building was deemed unsafe and yet garment workers were still required to work when the building ultimately collapsed, leaving 1,134 1, people dead and many of them were women. And then also, not to mention this past year, garment workers were required to work through the pandemic and they faced several problems with large fashion retailers like Kohl's canceling and refusing to pay for orders that were ready to ship out. This left de developing countries with the debt of upfront production costs all while in the middle of a pandemic. Right, and so moving on to the environmental impacts. So here you will see some environmental impacts of the fashion industry. Every second, the equivalent of one garbage truck full of textiles is landfilled or burned. And for reference, a garbage truck can hold up to six tons of material. It takes 1,800 gallons of water to produce one pair of jeans. So if you have 10 pairs of jeans in your home, the water it took to produce them could fill up a swimming pool. And actually, 1.5 trillion liters of water are used every year by the fashion industry. Going back to that pair of jeans, one pair produces the CO2 equivalent of driving a car 50 miles. CO2 along with methane and some other gases that contribute to the greenhouse gas emissions can promote climate change and air pollution. When we think of greenhouse gas emissions in relation to industries, industries like automotive and agriculture come to mind, well, what if I told you that the fashion industry is accountable for 10% of all greenhouse gases? Which is why the fashion industry does have an environmental impact. And that brings me to my next point, which is microplastics. Basically, textiles made from synthetic fiber, like polyester, shed millions of tiny pieces of plastic every time they are washed. Unfortunately, they are so small that it's nearly impossible to filter them out. So they're everywhere. Think about every time you wash your clothes and the water discharges. That water is full of microplastics. The worst part is that since polyester is a relatively new material, we don't know the long-term effects of consuming microplastics considering polyester is a petroleum product. And then lastly, here are a few economic impacts of the fashion industry. 
So to start the supply chain, the supply chain is not transparent at all. To put this into perspective, Nike owns zero manufacturing factories. They actually outsource to third party manufacturing companies. And these third party companies also source the raw material, which can make it really difficult to hold these large co companies like Nike accountable. Another notable economic impact is the loss of manufacturing jobs in this country, which is not an issue that is just isolated to the fashion industry. But in the 1960s, we were making 95% of all of our clothing right here in the States. And by 2013, that number dropped to just 2%. Although there are no quick fixes for fast fashion, there are steps we can take as individuals to reduce our personal textile waste. So the quickest way to reduce textile waste is to change your shopping habits. Buying less equals less textile waste. I know it might be difficult with all the flashy marketing campaigns and sales constantly being pushed on us, but it will truly make a difference in the long run. So how do you go about doing this? Well, first you wanna look at your closet and assess your needs. Identify the gaps, you know, what do you use most? What do you need? Can anything be repaired? Next, I would suggest cleaning out your closet. Oftentimes we feel frustrated with our closet and that can be because it's overwhelming. Cleaning out your closet can also be an overwhelming task. So do it in sections, try color cording or grouping by item type. So pants with pants, dresses with dresses. You can also put away seasonal items like jackets and boots to free up some space. And if you must purchase something, consider secondhand options. Goodwill and Salvation Army are the most popular and the funds go back to the community. However, they aren't the only secondhand option. Look in your local city to find thrift stores that also promote public welfare where the proceeds can go to things like cancer, survivors, and even welfare program, animal welfare programs. There are also secondhand stores that carry not only secondhand material, but also overstock material, like stores like Savers. Shopping these stores is not only easier on your wallet, but they carry a large variety of items. The key to shopping these types of stores is to have an open mind and know that know what you're looking for. So for example, if you need a sweater, you know exactly what you're looking for, but you need to be willing to browse through the rack, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time. If shopping in person isn't your thing and you need something more curated, look no further than the world of online shopping. There are now many different online secondhand and resale shops, making it easier to filter for exactly what you're looking for. Some popular options include Thread Up, The Real Real, Poshmark, and Depop. The secondhand market is growing rapidly, and this can be related to an interest in secondhand clothing by the younger generations, as well as a shift towards online secondhand platforms. So, there are some options there, and then the secondhand market is actually projected to double in the next five years. In 2020, there were millions of new buyers and sellers in the secondhand and resale market, which is the exact opposite of what was projected to happen. Many were assuming that because of the pandemic, most people would be hesitant to purchase pre-owned items. However, it seems like people had a lot of time on their hands to clean out their closets and participate in the resale market. Just a, quick just a quick search on social media can show you tons of videos on secondhand haul hauls, but it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because now there's a trend in which people will go to thrift shops and then they'll flip the items that they found for an extraordinary profit margin. The problem with thrifting store flipping is that it can take away from some of those who rely on these stores as a primary retail hub. So the takeaway here is even when it comes to secondhand shopping, only buy what you need. Another trend that's gaining popularity is to rent pieces that you know you will only wear once or to refresh your wardrobe. You know that office holiday party that happens to have a semi-formal dress code? 
Rent the, run Rent the Runway is a great website for these special occasions, and you can save money in the process. And now, if you happen to like the item, you can purchase it to own, usually at a pretty discounted rate. And then finally, if you're going to buy new clothes, consider high quality, timeless pieces. It will be more of an investment, but they will last through wears and trends. Certain things to look for are, you know, name brand doesn't exactly equal high quality. Look at the stitching. Are there any loose threads? Look at the material used, the construction. Can it be taken in or out? And on that note, consider getting items tailored so you know that they will always look good on you. Things to avoid. Trends. Think of that crop sweater. It didn't age well in the 80s, and it's probably not going to age well in 2021. And you can also learn to style your clothing using apps like Pinterest. You can always do a quick search there. That's always a great resource. And if you do buy news, think of the resale value in five years. Will it stand the test of time? Okay, and then the next step in reducing textile waste is to extend the life of your textiles by washing them correctly. Failing to do so will result in your clothing breaking down sooner than they should. The first tip is to follow the care instructions on the label. I get it. I also hate reading a label that says hand wash only, but it's really there for a reason and it will help extend the lifespan of those pieces. Next is to air dry. It saves energy, it saves money, and it helps preserve the fibers of the textiles. Lastly, there is a good chance we are all using too much laundry detergent. Adding too much detergent can leave a film on your clothing and make them harder to dry. It's best to follow the instructions on your detergent bottle to ensure you are using the right amount of detergent. <clears throat> So here's a few more tips. Take the 30 wears challenge. So fast fashion pieces are typically designed to last only 10 wears. So by challenging yourself to extend that to 30 wears, this will cut back on excess textile waste. And watch out for micro trends. This is popular with the teens and young adults. Um, you might not even get a chance to wear something 10 times before it's already deemed out of style. You can also take it a step further by creating a capsule wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe is a small collection of garments designed to be worn together. The idea is that you have this foundation of essential pieces and you can mix and match, creating tons of outfits. There are a lot of examples and even templates online to help you get started. It's a great idea for things like workwear, or I even like to apply this concept when I'm packing for trips. So here are some of those examples I mentioned in the last slide. Here's a template for women and men. Pretty simple. And then, so on to the fabric debate. What should you choose, synthetic or natural? Natural fibers like cotton and linen are easier to recycle. However, you have to make sure that they aren't blended with synthetic material. When you end up with like a 50-50 cotton polyester blend, it's almost impossible to separate the two materials and you end up with something that looks like this picture here. So this terrifying picture is actually a pair of jeans that were composted. What you are seeing are all of the synthetic fibers that weren't able to break down. And this is typically that elastane that gives our jeans the little stretch that we all love. Well, like I mentioned earlier, some synthetic fibers or fabrics like polyester are made from petroleum, making them basically plastic. Polyester is the dominant fabric right now. 60% of all clothing is made with polyester, so it can be really difficult to avoid and even more difficult to recycle. Some synthetics that are better, there are some synthetics that are better than others, like tensile, lyosol. They're made mainly from eucalyptus and they're a good substitute for silk and cotton. Cotton is a good natural fabric. However, it requires a lot of water. I mean a lot of water. The nice thing about cotton though is that if you wanted to, you could essentially compost like a cotton t-shirt and it will break down in a compost pile. 
Linen is like a step up from cotton in that it requires very little water and energy to make, and it also breaks down naturally. And then, so sentimental clothing. We all have them, from concert t-shirts to ho old homecoming dresses. Here are a few tips on what to do with them. So first, store them in a different location from your everyday wardrobe. That way your closet won't feel overwhelming. You can also repurpose old pieces into fun mem mementos like jewelry, pillows, quilts. Just a quick Google search and you'll have thousands of ideas of what to do with your sentimental clothing. And if you aren't that crafty, Etsy has sellers who will take your items and repurpose them for you. So pillows, quilts like this one you see here, that's a t-shirt quilt. All great ideas. And then, so donating clothing is a great way to give your clothes a second life, all while reducing your textile waste. Oh yeah, and like Olivia mentioned, that quilt, let me go back so everyone can take a look. It's very sentimental. So we did lose a member of our team last year and Angela, our boss, she created this. So really sweet message there. And then I'll go back. So back to donating clothing. It is a great way to give your wardrobe a second life. Um, not to mention the secondhand market relies heavily on donations to thrive. While donating clothing is usually the first thing that comes to mind when we think of cleaning out our closet, if you aren't following these rules, you might be doing more harm than good. First, we want to put a big emphasis on donating gently used clothing. For any clothing that you donate should be free from holes, rips, and stains. While we're on the topic, clothing should also be clean and free from any questionable odors. The employees that sort through all of these items um, do price based on the condition of the item, so it's important to keep that in mind. Plus, it's also not fair to include items that should have been turned into rags or just thrown away. Finally, don't put any clothes in the recycle bin in hopes that it will be donated. I'm here to tell you that it will go straight to the landfill. So here are some local resources if you are interested in donations. Thrift shops are always a great resource. And in the city of Riverside, we actually have Pink Ribbon Thrift, which is a thrift shop where all the proceeds go towards resources for families who have been impacted by cancer. It's a great store with a great cause, highly recommend. Um, then also look to places like community outreach centers. They're always a great resource and in need of donations. So think places like women's shelters, nursing homes, places of worship, those are always in need of donations. And if you need to get rid of something, but you also want to meet your neighbors, there's always Facebook Marketplace. That's a great resource too. And then of course we have the websites and apps that I mentioned earlier, like ThreadUp, Poshmark, Depop, and Swap.com. And then animal shelters, they're always in need of donations. I know that the Riverside County Department of Animal Services said that they are always accepting new and gently used textiles, bedding, and towels. And another great resource is to host a clothing swap. We are actually gearing up to host one here at the department. So it's essentially a gathering where everyone would bring a few items from their closet that they wouldn't mind parting with. And you just lay everything out and everyone's able to shop through the items. It makes for really good entertaining too if you wanna gather a group of friends together. And so here is a list of in-store recycling programs. Just a small disclaimer, I can't speak to whether any of these stores are currently accepting donations due to COVID. However, they do have recycling programs. And some of them will even offer you a discount on your next purchase if you donate. This is a list. It's also available on our website. So some places will only accept denim and shoes. So just make sure to check ahead of time before you know you haul all your items down to the store.
And then here is a list of online textile recycling programs. So if you pr prefer to, you know, just ship your item in, you have four days, TerraCycle, TerraCycle, and then Zappos for good. So they accept only denim and shoes, but it is a free program. So would be nice to check out. And then I guess, so here we'll stop for questions if there's any. No questions, that's okay. If you have questions, you can throw them in there. If not, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please stay connected with us. Here's our social media handles. And then of course, you know, if you have questions, you think of questions later on, you can just call us, email us, but Thank you so much for joining us here on this Saturday morning. I saw a question about mending classes. Is that already dealt with? Yeah, so we do have a couple websites on, or a couple resources on our website. Let me actually link that. But if you, you know, have like a hole in your jeans, you want to save them. There's a bunch of techniques you can do to repair those. I would suggest YouTube. That's a great resource. They can, you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, you can also, you and, know, take your shoes in to like a cobbler. Mm -hmm. They're really good at repairing that. And how do we know if a company uses sustainable practices? If that... I'm buying new is a good question. So that might take a little bit of research and then not to get into the whole green washing thing, but since people are kind of interested in, you know, sustainable clothing, things like that, there are some businesses that are taking advantage and they'll say that they're using sustainable products, mm -hmm. but you know, they it's a little, it's a gray area. So I would just suggest looking at the material they use. Um, and then checking their website, People, the brands that are being sustainable are pretty proud and they'll put it out there. You'll know, um, but I would just watch out for greenwashing. Also, I'd like to add that um, many times there are sustainability reports, kind of like their annual reports, yeah. if it's a larger business. And so maybe in their annual report, they will call out sustainability and those practices are um, Folks that are doing <laughs> doing the right thing and not greenwashing will really put more information on there about their supply chain and where they source materials. Um, if you're not really seeing anything in there, then that might be a little bit suspect. So, again, you want, you kind of you need to you definitely need to do your research if you're concerned about what they're what they're doing and you know avoiding any greenwashing hype. But great question. I wonder if um, we could put together a list as we find out and share that. Yeah, well, we definitely could do something like that. I think uh, Tiffany had looked at a few things and as well as other team members, um, even B Corps, uh, there's called B Corporations that have um, more of a, a sustainable type, um, um, I guess, you know, from their, their supply chain and how they put things, what what they're using, the materials, where they're sourcing items, making sure it's also ethically sourced. So um, uh, we can put some items together to share, or at least some links to how you can go about um, vetting those types of companies that might be more in line with um, best sustainable practices. Thank you. Oh, and then let me just share the poll results. I forgot about that. So here are the poll results. You should see that on your screen. Um, so it looks like no one threw away items last year that were in good condition, so that's good. Happy to hear that. Very interesting. One person didn't throw anything away at all. That's fantastic. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. I know it's pretty early. I really appreciate it. And then if you do have any questions, feel free to send those in, follow us on social media. We'll be happy to answer those for you.